Today we're going to be discussing our new unit on similar triangles and we'll start with the discussion on what makes two figures similar. So polygons that have the sh same shape or, or the same uh, but different sizes are considered to be similar but they're, they're considered similar if their corresponding angles are congruent. The angles being congruent are what keep them the same shape. And in order to be similar, they have to have corresponding sides that are proportional. The proportions, which means they retain the same figure shape. The ratio of corresponding sides, or what keeps them proportional, is called the scale factor. That's how much it's increased or decreased by. If polygons are similar, then the perimeters are also proportional. That's an important thing to keep in mind as we're solving problems. So another thing to keep in mind is that in scale factor, order matters. So for example, if I wanted to list the scale factor of triangle ABC to DEF, I'm going from small to large. So our scale factor would be 2 to 3. We can find that scale factor by taking any side, such as AB, and then comparing it to its corresponding side of DE. Then just simplifying that fraction. 8 divided by 12 simplifies to 2 thirds. So the scale factor is 2 thirds or 2 to 3. The scale factor going the opposite direction then from DEF to ABC is going to be 3 to 2. Again, that order matters when you're matching scale factor. Okay. The ratio of the perimeter of DEF and ABC would be the same, 3 to 2. So similarity statements are exactly the same as congruency statements with one small change. Instead of using a congruency symbol which has an equal sign as a portion of it, we're just using the top of the congruency figure, just kind of like the toothpaste portion. And we would say that ABC is similar to DEF. Just like with corresponding parts of congruent triangles, um, that remains the same. Uh, just because we're using similarity, we still have to match corresponding angles and sides in order for it to be a valid similarity statement. So let's take a look at listing all of the congruent angles and writing a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. Here we've been given the information that JKL is similar to triangle PMN. So looking at this, we can say that angle J would be congruent to angle P. Remember that in order to be similar, the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So angle K is going to be congruent to angle M. If you're not entire sure, entirely sure which is congruent, you can re uh, refer back up to the similarity statement above, which has already listed the congruent parts. Finally, angle L is congruent to angle N. When we're writing a proportion relating the sides, we want to write the congruent sides as a fraction, or excuse me, the uh, proportional sides as a fraction. So we have JK, uh, which we know would be corresponding with PM, if not obviously by the diagram, then by the corresponding parts in our similarity statement. We can say that that is going to be equal to the ratio of KL to MN, which would be equal to the ratio of JL and PN. Because these are ratios, they represent the scale factor. Go ahead and try number two and then check back. So 
for our angles, you should have had x is congruent to r, y is congruent to y, and z is congruent to s. With our sides, please check your proportions against the ones that are listed here. They do not have to be in the exact same order, and you could have listed, for example, uh, the ry in the top and the xy in the bottom, as long as that was consistent across all of your ratios. Right? So a small triangle on the top, big triangle on the bottom, or big triangle on the top, small triangle on the bottom. Doesn't matter as long as it's consistent across all three. Okay. Now let's look at how to apply similar figures to solve for missing measures. In the figures below, we have two similar figures that have a scale factor of two-thirds, and we're trying to find the value of x. So what we're going to do is set up a proportion. Okay? And in our proportion, we know that two-thirds is the scale factor. Okay? Since we know that two-thirds is the scale factor, we know that that has to be equal to the proportion of the corresponding sides. Since side 42 corresponds with x, then we just need to set up this ratio to be equal to 2 thirds. Now it was 2 to 3, meaning going from the small one to the larger one. So when we're setting up our fraction, our small value uh, or our smaller figure should be on the top of the ratio in the numerator, and our larger figure should be in the bottom of or the denominator as x. Please remember that whenever you are using proportions, uh, you're going to be cross multiplying. So you're multiplying 2 times x and 3 times 42 to solve, okay? leaving you with 2x is equal to 126. Now we have ourselves a lovely one-step equation, leaving us with x is equal to 63. I'm going to leave 5 for you to do in a moment, and let's take a look at uh, example uh, 6. Here we've been giving a similarity statement and told that ABC is congruent to DEF, and we're trying to find the value of x. Now they did not give us a scale factor ratio, but that's okay because we have two sides to work with, so we can set up one of them using the two known sides. So we have 25 and x, which we know are proportional or are corresponding because AB are the first two letters and DE are the first two letters. So these two sides must correspond. And we can use the next two, we can use BC and FE to complete our uh, proportion in order to solve. Okay. So we set up our proportion 25 over x, and I went from bigger to small, so I'm going to continue that uh, 20 to 28, or at least left to right. It's hard to tell sometimes with the figures. And again, we're going to cross multiply, leaving us with a one step equation of 20x and equal to 700. 700 divided by 20 gives us x is equal to 35. Pause the video and give problems number 5 and 7 a try. So let's see how you did. You should have gotten x is equal to 36, uh, 33.6 for 5, and for 7 you should have gotten x is equal to 60. Hopefully you used the scale factor of 6 fifths and set that equal to the proportional uh, sides or corresponding sides of x and 28. It was big to small, so x should be on the top and 28 should be on the bottom. Here you should have used the, purpo uh, the similarity statement to determine which sides were similar and set up 75 over 40 is equal to x over 32. You could have also said 40 over 75 is equal to 32 over x. Either one will work. 
leaving you with 40x is equal to 2400 and x is equal to 60. Let's go ahead and take a look at problem number 8. Problems number 8 and 9 are similar to the problems above, made just slightly more complicated due to the fact that we have x plus 6 and x plus 3. So since both of these have a variable on the same triangle, we're going to end up with variables on both sides. So let's see how we would set this up. Okay. So we're going to take side 32, which is GA, and that would correspond with XK, XK, or X plus 3. Okay. And that is going to have to be equal to 36, which corresponds GM with XD, X plus 6. So when we cross multiply, we're going to end up with 32 times x plus 6 and 36 times x plus 3. Then we would need to distribute. Leaving us with 36x plus 108 and 32x plus 192. Or of course, you can have Desmos do the hard lifting on this one for you. At this point, it's just a multi-step equation where you need to gather your variables on the same side, which would simplify to 4x is equal to 84, or x equals 21. Again, this is a great opportunity to let Desmos do the heavy lifting. Let's try the last problem by yourselves. So the setup on this one is the hardest part. You've got side TL which is going to correspond with CH of 10. And you're going to have that be equal to LY, which is 4X minus 1, and that would correspond to KH X plus 5. Now, once you set this up, this ends up being a little bit funky. You still get variables on both sides, which then you would distribute and simplify giving you x is equal to 9. Good luck on your similarity journey today.